get underway for the Trofeo Nuvolari race and we are going racing. It looks like it's a great start for our pole man Richard Bradley in his Aston Martin. The Alta, the two-seater, the blue, Gareth Burnett car also making a good start and in fact manages to get the jump on all of them as well. I think that might have been Patrick Blakeney Edwards in the Fraser Nash slotting in behind him as well. So a good start from uh, Blakeney Edwards on the second row of the grid. Well, I'm really intrigued to see a brilliant start from pole position, but the pole starter is back in fourth place. I expected the TT reps, the Fraser Nashes, to come through, but what I didn't think was going to be such a brilliant start from the outer, uh, the two-seater in the hands of Gareth Burnett. And what went wrong for Richard Bradley, I do not know. Nose in front from pole position. By the time they got to Magic, he was in fourth. He's now fighting back. He's past one of those Fraser Nashes. He's back into third, but in front of him, Robert Beebe getting a bit twitchy into St Mary's, but by about four car lengths, we have Gareth Burnett leading this race. Let's see if everybody behind will stay on the black stuff and stay off the green sword. Unfortunately, Annette Mason is on the green sword, but that looks as though it's a mechanical failure. I'm not going to guess on that front, but anyhow, she is out of the race and pulls her car safely out of the way on the exit of Madgwick. Huge shame for that uh, Aston Martin Ulster, but back uh, towards the front end, I think we saw it was Robert Beebe in the phrase, and actually uh, made also a great start from the second row. So uh, Patrick Blakeney Evans and Robert Beebe both making excellent starts. Here is Beebe now trying to get through on the number 41 car, and that is... Uh, uh, Brad, Brad, Bradley. It's Richard Bradley who got up in from, he fell back to fourth, up to third, in second. Now the, the Fraser Nashes are trying to fight back. Michael Birch in the tall, number 20, tall, but down to fifth place. But uh, let's see how they settle down. But for Gareth Burnett, that's a really good start. But really, it was a poor start. Not initially, but literally in the second or third gear change for Richard Bradley. Now he's fighting back, closing in in second place. Gap between Burnett and Bradley, just under two seconds. Bear that in mind next time around, because Bradley's got clear line of sight, and he's got a bit of breathing space. Well, just over a second back to Robert Beebe in third. Yeah, it's the two-seater Alter, though, that needs for the time being, and uh, the pole sitter then slotting into second, Beebe in third in that number 59, Fraser Nash, just in front of Blakeney Edwards uh, in the number three, Fraser Nash, and then it is uh, the number five. Uh, that uh, is the Bentley of uh, Martin Oakington. Is that the number five? Or no, it's not the number five. It's the... Uh, it's not the number five. It's further back. But a good start then uh, from Burnett, who is already starting to uh, extend his lead now, 1.9 seconds the gap as they all try and filter uh, through and find their space on the track we get a look at the number five the Bentley they're making its way around on track and the fight up front though continues 20 minutes on the clock counting down to 17 we're at already this uh, is the number 70 car the outer two seater uh, Gareth Burnett trying to defend his lead but he's under pressure here he most certainly is. Richard Bradley just under two seconds down when they completed the first lap. He's far closer than that. Through the kick on the Lavin straight, they go, who's got more grunt? Well, I fancy it's the Alta out front that's just got a little more power, but it seems that the Alf, the Aston Martin behind is very, very nimble, or certainly the Red Dragon is worked very, very hard indeed by Richard Bradley. The gap will come down surely. Well, look at it as they turn through Woodcut. That's not nearly two seconds. That's way under half a second, I would suggest. Then, of course, who's going to break and get it lined up properly for the chicane? No risk being taken on the way out, but Richard Bradley will kick the tail out a tiny bit, don't want it too wide, don't want to sack what little power is there, but he's hunkered down, the gap is clearly way less than uh, what it was last time, two seconds, and now it's just under one second, let's see what Bradley can do this time around, but Gareth Burnett, he's a wily and very quick racer, he's not going to give up without a fight. Well, it's interesting, I think the outer is really good on the straights, but the Bentley, uh, but the, um, the Richard Bradley Aston Martin is really good in the corners, so they're sort of cancelling each other out a little bit, uh, one gets close to the the other one's able to pull away, so it's a proper cat and mouse fight. Yeah, Robert Beebe going very well in third place. Pat Blakeney Edwards has had a problem, and I think he may be coming back into the pits. He's tumbling down the timing screen. So now we have the move for the lead from Richard Bradley. Makes it very nice and tidily uh, down into Ford Water. By the time they get to St Mary's, he's already got about three or four, four car lengths clear. And look at the handling potential, but Richard's working that car really hard, easing the Red Dragon right to the edge of the circuit and not beyond. And that is totally the key. And he's got the flow that's required. But don't forget, last time around, we could see just how much grunt Gareth Burnett, now in second place, has under acceleration. What are they doing at this point on the circuit? They're accelerating hard. It's out of the second part of Lavin, and he will close the gap somewhat on the King straight down to Woodcut. But when they get there, of course, Richard Bradley just has more handling or is prepared to push that but much harder in the speed uh, model at the front, the Red Dragon. And uh, let's see, again, yes, here comes the outer, closing in, closing in, closing in. He'll dive, uh, not quite close enough to dive up the inside, but you could be sure that Bradley would break that little bit later.
Absolutely. Well, it's as they started for the time being now. Burnett uh, leading the way. Uh, sorry, Bradley leading the way. And uh, Burnett in second place in that two-seater out uh, through the chicane. They go to start another lap. And let's have a little look at uh, how it happened in the change for the lead then. So the Aston Martin on the left-hand side swoops around. It all looked a little bit too easy for him in the end. Well, you know what? That's also because Gareth Burnett saw what was coming and didn't fancy any collision. You can see a little look across between Ford Water and St Mary's, and he wasn't going to resist gravity, effectively. It resists the obvious. No need to take the boat out. He's going to now look in that tiny little mirror out in the middle of the car, looking back to see how close Robert Beebe is. But Robert's in third place in the number 59. Fraser Nash TT rep is about two and a half, three seconds back behind them. Now he's going to focus again. Further down the order, again, side-by-side -side racing. And we look at the uh, Maserati looking so glorious in their car, number 26. Yes. That's the Tipo 6M. Stefan Rettenmeyer, such a fan and supporter of that great Italian mark. There's a good battle going on for ninth and 10th as well. I think the uh, the number 24 Alfa Romeo of David Cook uh, has uh, just gone through on often in the number 88 uh, BMW. So that's happening a little further down the gap, only about three and a half tenths of a second in the uh, uh, lower half of the top 10. But uh, that about the closest gap at the moment. Although out front, the leader still keeping around half a second at the moment. Here is uh, that Alfa Romeo. Uh, and. Uh, in all in blue, that number 24 of David Cook, who I think has just taken Otten in the uh, number 88 BMW and is now starting to actually pull a fair bit of a gap there. So that is over 9th and 10th, though we look like we've lost one driver early doors in it. Mason from this race, so 29 runners still in it. As we take a look at the rear of the uh, number 17, Aston Martin, the Holly Mason Franchitti car having to work the, the steering wheel. You can see the right hand rising right up. Definitely Holly with the Holly logos on her helmet. But again, that's one of the glories of historic racing, and particularly a corner like Magic. It's got two apexes, and there's a dip in between, which naturally makes the tail of the car to come out. So the drivers with experience here know they've got to adjust it and get the car straightened for the second part. Because then, of course, you feed all the way up to that uh, straight down to Ford Water. And that's where the really brave people carry as much speed as they can. And Richard Bradley certainly in that camp. And I tell you what, Gareth Burnett, he doesn't give up. And look, the Alta two-seater is closing back in all over again. He's just done the fastest lap by the looks of it as well. A 1.41.898. So he is catching and catching quickly. But I think that Alta is so fast in a straight line. But then the Aston Martin just seems to have him on the brakes and into the corners but let's see how this dogfight uh, pays out still 12 minutes on the clock to run in this race but uh, Burnett going a lot quicker at the moment than the leader Bradley so that two-seater Alter, the number 70 that you can see on your screens now catching and catching well the point in which he does catch is accelerating out of Lavent which is what he's doing now through the kink they head down towards Woodcut but uh, through the twisty parts of St Mary's of course the Aston Martin got further ahead, but now who's going to break first? Well, it's going to be surely the heavier Alta. What's going to happen? The lighter... Oh, gosh, they had to get past uh, one of the Aston Martin Alsters, and that puts Richard Bradley on the outside. Is there enough outside? Is there enough handling? Is there enough cornering? Yes, there is. So Richard Bradley back into the lead, but in so many races here, Harry, this is your first members' meeting in Goodwood. We have cars with great straight line speed, but they tend to be a bit heavier with the heavier engine that's giving them more power, and they have to give it up again into Woodcut. It's nip and tuck. It's fantastic. Well, we saw that time and time again in some of the saloon car racing yesterday uh, as well, but here we go then, the two-seater Talbot trying back into turn one and he does get in front the net but can Bradley hang around the outside he's being forced out into uh, the grass but he holds firm and he gets back in front what a brilliant fight this is for the lead of this Trofeo Nuvolari race bit of traffic in the way uh, but that number seven Bentley of uh, Joel Lau gets nicely out of the way allows our leaders through this the tightest fight on track at the moment less than two and a half tenths of a second but traffic is coming up thick and fast traffic could be the deciding factor and there's two tip-top drivers in brilliantly prepared cars unfortunately for holly mason frankiti started that that well but sadly uh, giving some work for the 10 tenths crew trying to point point out what's gone wrong so two of their three cars are out so no pressure at all for, for James Wood. He's carrying their flag, but he's down in 25th position in the third of the, that, those Aston Martin Ulsters, the number 27. There's a nice battle for sixth going on by the looks of things. That involves the number 13 Maserati uh, and the number two. 
Uh, that is the Alfa Romeo route of Cleverly. Uh, so they're uh, quite a tight battle there. There's some half a second between sixth and seventh right now. So uh, they're fighting hard alongside our leaders. The rest of the gaps are about a second or bigger than that. So uh, keep an eye on that close battle for uh, seven, uh, for sixth and seventh, number 30 car and the number two car. Less than half a second uh, between those at the moment, but it's still uh, back up front. Traffic management proving so tricky to try and get through on these back markers at the moment. It's Bradley who has the advantage, and now it's the two-seater Alta of Burnett who has to negotiate the back of the MG in front of him. Then he uh, makes his way by uh, on the main straight. But uh, look at the difference of line here. He's having to cut right down the inside and try and follow Bradley through, and they do. They manage to get quite a few cars on the main straight before turn one quickly approaches. Traffic is still going to have an effect because if Richard Bradley loses the momentum, he has to eke out everywhere. And it's a point at which uh, we can have Gareth Burnett accelerating hard in that uh, mid-blue number 70 out of two-seater sports. That could be the answer. Unfortunately, it looks though like we've lost the BMW 328. That was uh, being driven very well by Albert Otten, number 88 at the side of the circuit. So, uh, unfortunately, they had a flash of seeing car number 34. Really unusual Lance here in this race, owned by Michael Scott. Driven by Herndon, it's the Lancia Astra Steady Special. So many cars we talked about, you talk about barn fights, but uh, suddenly they're repurposed and back they come after many, many years away. Yeah, we were just uh, following uh, Bradley Edwards there for uh, the time being, the number four car, the Aston Martin Alster that is a bit further down the pack, uh, but is having a, a good fight uh, for the, uh, the places just outside of the top ten. A shame for that BMW that's had to pull over to the side because it was running rather well. Yeah, well, well, number three, Fraser Nash TT. Re remember that started from fourth on the grid, but Pat Blaney you know, unfortunately had to visit, um, drop right down the order. He's now fighting back, so it's a sub-story, but way too far back in a 20-minute race to uh, get to the front. We have just over eight minutes remaining, but he will be one of the quick guys out there. But really, it's all eyes on Richard Bradley leading in the Aston Martin speed model Red Dragon and making work very well. But Gareth Burnett less than half a minute, half a minute, I think, not half a second behind him. Third place, Robert Beebe driving really well in the 59 TT rep. And Michael Birch started third. Here he is in the bright green Talbot, fourth place overall, but he's got company. He's got, uh, let's have a look who's close behind. In fact, he hasn't got company because he's got a bit of a gap. Sorry, that was a car he was lapping. And look how much vibration down the start finish straight. Loads of grunts and uh, the light, the auxiliary lights up on that bar in the front shaking around. And here's uh, Rubens Barrichello dedicated uh, helmet there. Uh, still this battle raging on between 6th, uh, 7th and 8th uh, is looking fascinating. All within a second of each other. That's the, uh, the number 30 car, that's the Maserati. We've got the number 2 car, the Alfa Romeo. And the number uh, 24 as well, that's another Alfa Romeo. There's the two Alfa Romeos versus the Maserati over 6th, uh, 7th and 8th at the moment. So keep an eye on that. If you're seeing a bit of close action out on track, uh, that's probably where it is happening at the moment as we look at the current man that is leading this race, the uh, number 41 of uh, Richard Bradley making his way through in his Aston Martin. That gap starting to extend a bit, even though Burnett had the fastest lap uh, a few laps ago. He hasn't quite been able to transfer that pace as the lights flash on uh, for Bradley to let him the back markers know. That's a proper uh, endurance racing tactic, isn't it? I'm coming through. I'm quicker. Get out of my way. I'm going to flash my lights at you. One of those first two, he's, in the, he's the one who knows he can't afford to lose momentum uh, to the He's going to be compromised a great deal more. Now, really good little scrap, just uh, Rupert Cleveley and the Alfa Romeo, glorious in its uh, cream livery there. And a car that looks very similar in the Louis Chiron tribute livery car, number 42. Sorry, that's uh, date yeah, 42 tucked in behind another Alfa Romeo. Such glorious thoroughbred racers. Yep, that uh, number 42 really uh, chasing down. Oh, that's uh, the number two we focus on, actually. Cleverly is being uh, chased down by the number 24. Four. No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a number 42, and it's yes. just been lapped. I think that should but be No, Richard that's Frankel. the wrong number. It's the wrong number, the so he is the 24, number. so it's Richard Cook. Yes, that's the original number we think it used to race in, but this is, we believe, uh, the number 24 of David Cook, who is hunting down uh, the number two of, of Cleverly. Uh, really super helpful uh, for us up here, but it's the Alfa Romeo currently hunting down uh, the uh, the number two car, uh, the other Alfa Romeo, really two Alfa Romeos uh, in tandem, and uh, the gap coming down ever so slightly. It's about half a second or so, six tenths of a second. Uh, so uh, this 
over uh, sixth and seventh place at the moment. So this is really the closest battle out on track. Perhaps 13th and 14th position might be hotting up slightly uh, with the uh, number four Aston Martin of Edward Bradley closing in on uh, the number 53 uh, BMW, Fraser Nash of John Neary further back. But uh, in terms of battling inside the top 10 with five minutes to go, well, sixth and seventh place certainly doesn't look decided just yet. No, Rupert Liebley, Cleveland constantly having to look. Is David Cook attacking up the inside? No, he's uh, kept him behind there. They're coming up behind Richard Frankel, who is in 42. That's the MG. Uh, they're just coming up to that. The blue one will... Uh, He's taking the inside line. This could be an opportunity for David Cook because uh, certainly in front of him, Rupert Cleveland had to run a little bit wider than he wanted going through the second part of St Mary's. And now who's going to be brave around the outside? Oh, David Cook, well, he's never knowingly not brave. He's looking to keep going. He doesn't want to be obstructed by number 26, which is the type Tipo 26M with Stefan Rettenmeyer. Put a lap on that. They're both looking across at each other. Who's got the better acceleration out of Lavin? Because, of course, that's the longest straight on the circuit. And it looks so... Rupert Cleveland did a good job there. In fact, he's got about half a dozen car lengths advantage as they go down to Woodcote. Great little scrap between these glorious Alfa Romeos. Fighting not over victory, but over sixth place. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. And uh, I think we also saw the, the, the fake 42 getting uh, past the real number 42, the MG, uh, which is in the field, but towards the back that they were uh, uh, overtaking with Richard uh, Frankel, uh, Frankel at the wheel. So... Uh, that battle continues on. We are currently looking at the uh, number nine Bentley. This is William Metcalf, uh, and he is currently in 17th position, but having a great fight with the number six Talbot of um, Martin Overington. Yeah, and just to reinforce the message... Oh, Nicholas that, Pellet, I should say, sorry. The, the, Nicholas Pellet, the, uh, the car we're looking at in the background there is uh, William Metcalf in, in the Bentley, one of the three Bentleys running on synthetic fuel. So great to have this uh, sort of new technology in a car that is not exactly in the first flush of youth, but Bentleys, when they turned up at the more people laugh at them to an extent because they thought these are far too big and unwieldy, but they proved to be super effective through the day and night in Juro. Absolutely. Well, out in front, though, that gap is extending now, and it's, it looks a little bit ominous uh, for the uh, the number 41, which currently leads the Aston Martin Red Dragon of Richard Bradley. Now, uh, three and a half seconds, the gap uh, to Burnett in the two-seater Alta. Here is our leader coming through the chicane, start another lap. Two and a half minutes just under that on the clock remaining of this race. So we'll get a couple more laps in as well. He's uh, going faster and faster. He just had the fastest lap at one minute, 41.5. No, not good enough. 141.2 next time around. So very consistent, but worryingly for Gareth Burnett, who's now 6.6 .6 seconds in arrear. The gap has really gone out. Bradley getting faster and faster. The two Alfa Romeos are still absolutely uh, taking each other for all that they've got. Uh, the number two of Cleverly uh, is in seventh, still just keeping behind the number 24 Alfa Romeo uh, of David Cook behind him in the uh, in the blue Alfa. And at the moment, though, it's the cream Alfa that has uh, the benefit of track position as they come into the braking zone for the right left chicane and back out onto the main straight. Out they go. Harlequin in the second car with a Harlequin style uh, livery on his helmet, slightly different colours from the rugby shirts but uh, again great to have these people who absolutely adore these cars and uh, they pick and choose what they want to race but uh, anyone who gets their hands on an Alfa Romeo 8C has done a very well indeed, such agile machinery and if you listen very carefully, no not carefully, listen any way you fancy they make a brilliant brilliant sound yeah, and that uh, Alfa Romeo 8C of uh, the number two car uh, rebuilt back in uh, 2014 uh, to and David Cook's uh, Alfa Romeo a homage, uh, uh, the colours at least, to uh, Louis Chiron. Rebuilt by uh, renowned Alfa pre-war expert Neil Twyman. Raced throughout Europe by uh, ex-England rugby international, as you say. Former Harlequin, David Cook at the wheel. And that's going fighting for that seventh place between... Uh, both of them at the moment, that gap is the closest out on track. What I want to see as Richard Bradley starts his final lap, we've just got one minute left on the clock, he won't uh, lap under one minute, you can be sure of that, so the chequered flag will greet him. The gap back to Gareth Burnett in the Alta two-seater in second place with six seconds, it's now a whisk under nine seconds. Is there a problem that will leave Burnett not even hold on to second place, waiting for Robert Beebe to come through? No, he's another ten seconds in arrear. So let's hope for Gareth Burnett, who pushed so hard and fleetingly had his nose in front about uh, two laps ago, 
Was there a moment where he got blocked by traffic? Was there a moment we didn't see when he went off onto the grass? Can't quite tell you the answer to that. Maybe we'll find out after the race. But Richard Bradley, well, he's not stopping for anyone. Pressing on, pressing on. Absolutely. A bit of a lonely race uh, for the Fraser Nash in third for Robert BB. Uh, the number 59 in the end. He's got a lot of time in front of him and a fair bit of time behind him as well. Well, he's only got two and a bit seconds advantage over Michael Birch, who qualified third, is in fourth and is closing in. So look out for the number 20, uh, Tall Talbot, the, uh, one of... The AV105 Brooklyn's racers, and uh, it just uh, has been going better and better. So possible problem for Burnett in second place, his lap speed dropping away quite comprehensively. Possible problem for BB, and Birch is closing in. Quite possibly, I think Birch would, would rather like to take that third place, having started the race from there. But a uh, bit of traffic to negotiate for our leader. Uh, Richard Bradley in that Aston Martin, but uh, it's been a sublime race from him. And then you have to say some great fighting uh, for the lead, some great scraps up and down. That battle for seventh's not going anywhere. Uh, Cook is keeping uh, Cleveland in within seven tenths of a second for the majority of this race. So uh, that doesn't look done yet, but uh, they come through the chicane pit lane to your right. We should see the chequered flag, and it will be Aston Martin who takes the win at the uh, Trofeo Nuvolari race here for the 80th members meeting at the Goodwood Motor Circuit. Richard Bradley takes the win and the two-seater Albert will come home in second place. A valiant effort, but in the end didn't quite have enough and dropped off. And uh, we await for Robert Beebe in the Fraser Nash, the number 59, to take third on the podium. And he does so and just in front of the number 20. And that was indeed the other Talbot, Michael Birch takes fourth and then we have to see how this uh, seventh and eighth battle unfolds the number two car the two alfa romeos uh, still within seven tenths of a second cleveland